sermon on this uh, and some encouragement for us to keep on track and in perspective some simple things to remember I don't know if like me this has been a bit of a bit of a week for you but um, it seems to be quite a week last week now let's pray our father in heaven we pray that thou will be merciful to us that thou will draw near to us and enable us to draw near to thee Lord as we know we should at all times give thee glory and live for thy glory and how with the troubles that we have upon our land and indeed upon the world at this time it, it causes much anxiety and uh, and uh, doubt and sadness and uh, yet we know that we are here commanded to to have our sights set upon thee and though we are to take due diligence in all matters of this life we are given a great and glorious hope in our Lord Jesus who we desire to be glorified and honoured Lord forgive us all our sins cleanse us as we look to Jesus Christ our full and complete and absolutely sufficient saviour we thank thee that we're not left lacking in times of need and we pray Lord for thy help upon us as we hear thy word now in the Lord Jesus name Amen Amen, Amen. well Colossians chapter 3 and the first verse in particular if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God this verse and this chapter the first part of it is one that is always one that I return to with great uh, thankfulness to the Lord it just puts things in perspective um, some of us may be more heavenly minded than others some of us can maybe afford to be more heavenly minded than others we haven't got some of the pressures on us that others have but there there is as we've been saying a great deal of pressure and concern even it's been called fear and panic upon people at this time and perhaps this this text in Colossians Paul the Apostle writing is not writing uh, particularly for times of plague but um, times when people will, will, will be looking elsewhere the Colossian church it was thought that there was ideas that were coming upon it that they needed something else apart from Jesus Christ and so it's a great epistle in which Paul writes of the great glory of the Lord Jesus and the sufficiency of him that we really are uh, complete in him as he as he says elsewhere now the f I, want to, I want to keep this brief from to three simple things that at such times we need to keep ourselves on track and keep things in perspective and this is our perspective here if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God that is our priority as uh, Christians it's a real priority for the things of Christ we're risen with him we're seeking things above where Christ is on the right hand of God so uh, simple things to remember firstly remember where we are and who we are we are risen with Christ the Christian is risen with Christ he's alive from the dead he's got everlasting life those that believe on him Jesus said will never die never die we die our bodies may die but we'll never die because when we pass from this world we'll be with the Lord now a great passage on this again briefly is in the epistle to the Ephesians and chapter 2 verse 5 and 6 although we could read a bit more let's read it from the beginning 
Ephesians chapter 2. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the world of the air, of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. There we go. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, this was the um, chapter that was being preached on uh, when I was converted. Uh, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. The work that God has done for the believer is, is literally that a person without Christ is dead in their sins. They may be very nice, we may love them very much, we, we must love them, we, must, we do, we love, every, love everybody, but a person without Christ is dead in sins. Our sins have separated us from God and uh, spiritually we are, we are dead. People say they're spiritual, but, but, but they're not. But when a person has put their trust in Jesus Christ, they've turned to him, they've been saved from their sins. And the Bible describes as this as us being raised with Christ. It's as if we were crucified with him on the cross but now we're resurrected to everlasting life we've come up from the grave with him and we're as alive as jesus is it's absolutely amazing isn't it so this is our first thing here if you then be risen with christ and i could say the question is well are you risen with christ do you know that christ is is your life it says there isn't it uh when Christ, who is our life, verse 3, uh, back to Colossians, shall appear, then shall he also appear with him in glory. Christ is, is the life of the believer, and Jesus is alive. So we're alive, we're raised from the dead, we have everlasting life. The work that God does uh, to a soul through faith you think well what is faith in jesus it's nothing it's nothing is it it's just that i believe in him i believe that he died on the cross and that he's alive and he raised from the dead it seems like such a small thing but it's not it's massive it's enormous it means that rather than you being dead in sins you're forever and ever alive your sins have been washed by the blood of christ he died his body he bore our sins in his body on the tree that's what we believe so there's no more condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus you're risen you're alive now whether we're in this world or whether we're in the next whether whether we live or whether we die we are the Lord's the Bible says and the Apostle Paul uh, says uh, is it to the Philippians that he he suffered so much that he didn't know really whether he would rather live or die and he said, well, actually, he said, I'd rather die. I'd rather be with the Lord. Because that would be glorious. That would be wonderful. He said, but for your sakes, it's more needful that I live. And he says, I think I will live. And, of course, in the context of where we are at the present time, if you're a Christian, you're risen with Christ. In a way, we've already got everything, haven't we? He's given us everything. And that's important. When you're looking around at the state of the world and the, the depression, we were talking to some believers who were witnessing yesterday out here. And I was saying to them, no, really, we've got such a, a wonderful saviour. We've got such good news. The world, you go into the supermarket and there's a, there's a positive sense of a chilling feeling in there uh, it, not just the rushing around trying to get everything but just the sense of depression 
the sense of this awful calamity that's come upon the world and our nation as well and the things that it means the idea that we might have to just be cut off from people and be on our own but the Christian can never be self-isolated it's impossible because God's always with us we grieve the spirit by our sin when we sin we grieve the spirit and it feels like God is a long long way away but when we say Lord I'm so, I've, I'm, I'm not worthy of being accepted as a Christian I'm a sinner my thoughts are not right my heart's not right I try but I'm a, fa a failure in so many ways and I've done things I shouldn't have done and said things I shouldn't but Jesus died for all those sins and I draw near to him and if, if we're put into a situation where we're to be is it called isolated whether you're a family some of you are on your own and you, you haven't got a family to be with in that situation perhaps and you really feel it but God will be with you the Apostle Paul said elsewhere when he went his first standing in his trial no one stood with me he said but the Lord stood with me and he said and he delivered me and he, he shall deliver me from every evil and deliver me unto his heavenly kingdom and as, as we said in that prayer um, there um, God's wrath is, is much deserved but his, his mercy is great to those that turn to him and what a wonderful time this is for calling on people to put their trust in Christ they've got nothing they can trust in at the moment they're trusting on, on the National Health, uh, was it called Public Health England, and that advice, and that's all good advice as far as we know. We don't know any better as far as medical things. We, we follow these things very carefully. But there's still that thought, isn't there, in the back of your mind, my loved ones may be about to perish. I may be about to perish. But with Jesus Christ, we have everlasting life. So remember, first thing, you're risen with Christ. If you're a Christian, you're alive and you're risen with Christ, you've got everlasting life. Whether you live or die, you are the Lord's and you have nothing uh, to lose. And then, uh, secondly, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Seek those things which are above. Now this is a real challenge now because as a Christian, a person is accepted in Jesus Christ. They're forgiven all their sins. They're counted righteous. The righteousness of Christ is counted to the person that believes. He's completely clothed in the righteousness of Christ. And we can have a great assurance that we're absolutely fine. And then we can get on with things, can't we? We can get on with the things of the day-to-day -day -day living. We can get on with the things we've got to do. But here it says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Just because we're in a time of a calamity, don't let the calamity take over from your number one objective, the glory of God in Jesus Christ, serving him, loving him, uh, uh, seeking the salvation of others. Seek those things which are above. Always be seeking them. Though we've got them already, we're going to keep seeking them. And this should be our big thought that's directing our mind and our remembrance, that we're seeking the things which are above. And I just want to turn you for this to Matthew chapter 6, the Sermon on the Mount. If you were had to self-isolate for a, a few weeks, no doubt you could learn, if you were well enough, still which most people would be at that stage you could try and learn the Sermon on the Mount that would be a really good challenge wouldn't it and if there were two or three of you you could have a competition to see who could learn it and you could learn some Psalms and we could we could say how are you getting on with your eyes oh I've nearly learned chapter 5 chapter 6 we could really have a go now you see there could be great joy that the believer could have in such a time I believe and we would know the Lord's presence with us uh, very much so chapter 6 it says um, 
we've got the Lord, we've got the Lord's Prayer in there. We've got commandments of not being ostentatious or showing off about our achievements. And then in verse 19, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Uh, if you've got any shares at the moment, you'll find that they've dropped about 30% in the last week. And you, if you've got a, an amount of them saving up for your pension, it's had quite an impact. We trust that these things will bounce back in due course. But if the companies go broke, then the shares are not worth very much. So, But the Christian, though he may have uh, some savings and pensions and all sorts of things behind him and, and, and an income from being able to work, yet our treasure... It's not meant to be that sort of stuff. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And at the end of that chapter, in verse 33, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. There's uh, sections in here about the... Um, about the birds and uh, what they've been provided with and how God has provided. Now this is a time, this is a time to trust the Lord where it looks like you may be running out of various household products or food supplies. Actually, you might be surprised what you've got in your fridge and in your freezer and in your cupboard that there's not actually that much of a shortage. And if you do need anything, uh, we'll be in touch with each other asking by the way have you got a bit of sugar have you got a bit of flour and i'm sure we'll all be around helping each other very quickly but uh you see we're not to be so worried about tomorrow today has enough evil of the day and we're told here then set your treasure the things that you're really valuing are the heavenly things so we have the word of god we have the bible we have jesus christ himself we have the hope of heaven. The Christian has a whole treasury. You say, how's your cupboard? Well, it's a bit empty, but I've got a Bible in my house. Some people haven't read their Bible for years. And now is a great time, a great time to be reading the Bible. You'll find that you could be like the people who were with Jesus, where they'd uh, forgotten to eat. <laughs> they'd forgotten to eat because they were so engrossed in the things he was saying the things of god jesus is our food really isn't he uh, it really is the bread of life that's what he said you can't just live on bread you need him and we then as christians are to be seeking those things that are above don't get so yeah i spent a lot of time reading on the latest updates and it was only this morning the final decision I made, we will not meet in our normal place of meeting. We will have a separate place uh, so that we're not going to be causing distress to anyone that may be concerned and that we can come here uh, more uh, in, in, a, in, in a more uh, certain way, as it were. And uh, But uh, it's been taken some thought, a lot of thought and care and prayer has gone into thinking about what should we do for the best and not to go to various conferences but to be here uh, for the people so we can help each other but in all that thinking and thought what comes out the most is the things of heaven the things of jesus christ are so precious that we can set our thoughts on him and the best thing the best thing and it's easy to get what's the latest news when you wake up but as soon as you can get into the bible and what god is saying and seeking the things that are above these are precious things and they become richer and more glorious as the things of this world seem rather failing and and weak and um we are of course to be commending christ to others the more that we have heaven in us the more heavenly we are the more easily we can commend Jesus Christ to others as it always becomes very, very plain what their lack is at this 
tie. And then, it was going to be the last point. Where do we look? If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. The treasures in heaven uh, are where Christ is sitting on the right hand of God. Now, I've talked about God being very close to us. But here, we have both things, don't we? We have Christ is very close to the people of God and he's also far above. And here, we're those of us that are risen with Christ, we're to be seeking those things where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. We're almost in heaven. And Christ is reigning in heaven. The Lord Jesus is reigning on heaven, sitting on the right hand of God. We've been looking recently in our midweek meetings at the judgment and then at the uh, from the resurrection and the ascension and the Christ seated at the right hand of God from whence he cometh to judge the quick and the dead but he's sitting there in authority until he's made his enemies his footstool but this is where our treasure is where Christ is at the right hand of God this one who was raised from the dead seated there it's an amazing thought isn't it Jesus who is for us and of whom the Bible says nothing can separate us from Christ. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. He is at the right hand of God in heaven. And it says there in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. What a perspective to remember. And these, these are the great perspectives that the Christian needs to remember so much at this very serious time in our country and in our world. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Well, these words are enormous and, and very, very great. But just... Uh, uh, that's where we are and just very briefly uh, to continue our great hope we have verse 4 here says when Christ who is, who is our life shall appear then shall we also appear with him in glory I hope that this is your hope it is, a, it is an, an amazing amazing hope that the Christian, when Christ will appear, Christ is coming again from his place of being seated at the right hand of God and he's coming to judge the world. And a great number of people are completely unprepared for this. Uh, we'll maybe speak this evening more on the aspect of hell rather than heaven. But this is the heavenly blessings here this morning. And Christ shall appear, ye that are in Christ, if you're trusting in him, you know if you're trusting in him or not, for yourself to be saved from your sins. I can't see anywhere else anyone could look. There's nowhere, there's no other cure. You know, when things are quiet, there's a lot of yoga going on and, and, and mindfulness and, and people talking about their spirituality. But I don't think there's very much of that going on at the moment because it's dead. It, it doesn't have life. It doesn't have spiritual life in it. The people going about their religious works that concerned very much that it, that they don't have, they can't drink of the cup in the Lord's Supper. But we're not saved by the cup in the Lord's Supper. We're saved by the blood of Christ that was shed once, which we remember in the Lord's Supper. If we don't, we can go without having communion for months, for years. People are saved without. Communion. It's not a necessary means of sal. It's not a means of salvation. It may be a means of grace. It may be a great blessing to us and a help and encouragement. But we feed on Christ spiritually. 
when we trust in him. That's our assurance. It's, n- it's not being given a cup with the wine. It's not be- that may encourage us, <coughs> encourage us greatly. But the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. And that blood was shed once and it's finished. And he's risen and he's in heaven. And that's our assurance that Jesus is in heaven and he's coming again for his people. And when we see him, whether it's because we die or whether it's because of that long that return of him that yes when these pestilences happen it looks so imminent that he could return i can't see the world uh, it's going to fall apart even more and he'll return very very soon it may well be so we don't know we may recover and it may be thousands of years until jesus returns but what we do know is that one day we shall see him and it says in the epistle of John the first epistle that when you see him when you, when when he shall appear you shall appear with him in glory here John says you shall be like him when you see him as he is this is the Christian's hope and it's a great testimony at this time we don't need to be bashing people over the head at this time we want to be encouraging people to turn to Christ and to be saved this is a glorious hope and there's one last thing in here in verse 5 mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanness inordinate affection and evil concupiscence covetousness uh, idolatry and it goes on through that whole chapter then it says now be holy It's a natural response really, isn't it? It should be a natural response that because we're so blessed, keep on the time, as we're so blessed in Jesus Christ, we should be so thankful and wanting to live for him. But it's emphasised here. Get rid of sin. Be as free of sin as you possibly can. That's the thing here. Because this what Jesus has done, the Lord Jesus Christ has done for his people is so amazing. We should be so taken up with them. And this emphasis, godliness, holiness, and all that that entails. It's not just the negative things of, of don't do this and don't do that, which are emphasized in here. But the other things, uh, uh, kindnesses, Humbleness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, further down in that chapter. There's an immense task. And we're, 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 we're not saved by our holiness, are we? We're justified by faith. We're, we're, we're not justified by being sanctified. But because we're justified, because we're counted righteous, we are, we belong to him and we trust him. As a person trusts Christ to forgive them, they also trust him in the things he says for how we should live. And so we, we seek to serve him faithfully. Well, there's a great challenge and it takes some time, it takes some thought to apply these things. We can be out of here in a few minutes and we can be back to our concerns. How are we going to keep our hands washed? How are we going to not infect anyone else? Yes, think on these things, but keep on coming back to this big perspective. If you're then risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God and seek them not just for yourself, seek them for others I believe that at this time the people of the world are are very very touched and we must be we must be sensitive yes there's a warning of hell there's a warning of hell to be given but there's a great grace Jesus Christ that all that come to him will be risen and alive with him will never perish but are 
everlasting life. And the end is the best bit. People are fearing the end, but it's get better and better with it. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, almighty God and glorious God, God of all power and authority, our sovereign, great God almighty, our saviour, thou hast been merciful to us, those of us who've been enabled by thy, thy grace to turn to thee and put our whole trust in the Lord Jesus Christ that he, the Son of God, became flesh, became man, and dwelt among us. And those that were there, they beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. They saw his wonderful works, his miracles, and how people hated him, and then they crucified him. But yet this was all purposed. That great evil worked for good. We thank thee, Lord, that all things work together for good. To those that love thee, those that are called according to thy purpose. Those that thou hast saved. Ultimately all is goodness and blessedness. Oh Lord, we pray for those who are suffering great sickness at this time, who are in hospital, who are struggling to breathe with this virus and are, and are dying. And there's no faith healer that can come and lay their hands upon them and see them raised up. And yet, those that have faith in Jesus Christ are about to enter into thy glory and see the Lord Jesus Christ and be brought out of the sinful and wicked world. Lord, we pray, Lord, for opportunities for each of us to be a good witness. And we know to do this we must walk honestly and humbly before thee we pray Lord thou would fill us with thy Holy Spirit that we may love the Lord Jesus Christ that we will not just seek our own things but seek the good of others Lord may this be a time of revival in the church seriousness godliness getting down on our knees in prayer before thee and calling upon thee Lord not just for mercy for the physical sake which we have prayed for but also for souls may thy church be seen as the place of rescue the place of salvation the place of hope and even more of joy in the Lord we thank you Lord that we can know thy presence with us as we meet together we can know thy presence even if we were to be having to be isolated on our own Lord we thank you that there is an internet connection for most people we can communicate still from that place and telephone one another so Lord, we commit ourselves to thee this Lord's day. Do bless all those that are gathering together. We thank thee, Lord, that it's a day of prayer in the United States. It's been a call for. We pray, Lord, that though many people won't be able to meet together here, yet we will draw near to thee. And even prayers, and maybe especially prayers that are made quietly, by individuals in the quietness of their rooms they will hear these prayers Lord, <coughs> and will save thy people we commit ourselves to thee now in 
Jesus name Amen we're seeing again number 23 number 23